Hello, Chloe here. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's a new year, which means it's time for a new figures pre-order video. And like usual, we'll be going through them by release month. But before we get into it, a moment of silence for all the figures that I canceled last year for various reasons. That's enough time. So anyway, taking into account all those cancellations I made and there were a lot, this year's pre-order list isn't as massive. I feel like I've reached a good point in my collection where I find I'm not that tempted by many of the figures being announced or coming out or I'm just okay with waiting for them to release and risking that 50-50 of them either tanking or going up in price afterwards. I'm still keeping an eye on a lot of figures and just not pre-ordering them. And I'll mention some of them in this video, but not that many since this is primarily a video of the figures I have pre-ordered currently. But yeah, let's get right into it. Starting us off in January, we have a couple of figures that were delayed into this year. First, we have Fuha from Honkai Impact 3rd, and I've already talked about her in the last pre-orders video since she was originally supposed to release last December, so last month. So I won't say too much about her here, but I am still really excited to get her. But I will be surprised if she doesn't get delayed at least once more. Next up, we have the Hatsune Miku 2022 Chinese New Year version and I've actually had this pre-ordered for a couple of years now but I haven't mentioned her at all in any of my past pre-orders videos I think because she just kept getting delayed into the next year or something like that but hopefully since they haven't delayed her recently she'll actually release this month I pre-ordered her before I decided that I was good on Miku figures in my collection. I don't have that many, but it's enough for my collection. I am still pretty excited to get her because she does look great. She looks really nice, but she is really expensive. And one of the only reasons why I got her was because I had points to redeem on Tom, Tokyo Otaku mode. And I also got a lot of cashback points for buying her. So that said, I don't actually remember how much I spent on her, so I just put her retail price, which is 35,800 yen, which is really expensive, but thankfully not what I had to pay. She's definitely overpriced and she probably most likely will go down in price, I feel like. But for my final Miku figure, I think this is a good way to end it for now. <laughs> For the rest of the month, I just have a couple of Nendoroids. The first one is a Nendoroid of my man, Noel Windknight from Why Rayliana ended up at the Duke's Mansion, which is one of my favorite Webtoon manhwa series. And it also has an anime series that aired last year, which was okay, but I definitely recommend the Webtoon over it. It's just a lot better in my opinion. So this Nendoroid is by Toy Tech, which is kind of not the best, but we take what we are given, especially for a more niche series like this. So Noah doesn't really come with that many accessories, and even worse, he doesn't even get his counterpart, my girl, Riley Anna. Like, I hate it when figure companies only make one character out of a pair, much less Riley Anna is like the main character, and I can't believe they would just leave her out, and there's like no news for her, I think, of getting an android. So I was kind of on the verge of like, canceling my pre-order of Noah just because I really do want Raliana with him but you know what I decided that I like him just as much as I like her so I'm keeping him and I just hope that they make Raliana later down the line. <laughs> the last figure for this month is a Nendoroid of Kurumi from Licorice Recoil and y'all, when I say they put more effort into a supporting character's Nendoroid than the main characters themselves, like her Nendoroid just looks so much better than Chisato and Takina's, which I still really like too, but she just looks a lot better to me. And she also comes with really cute accessories like the VR headset as well as a watermelon slice. So cute. I love this Nendoroid. Super adorable. Love Kurumi too. So really excited for this one. 
In February, I don't have any figures pre-ordered. So it's a free month for me and hopefully it stays that way. Moving on to March, first up is the Vampire Miku one. And I know I just said that I was done with Miku figures, but this is an Android, doesn't count. And this one just looks so good and so cute that I couldn't resist it. But hopefully this is the last Miku Android as well. 2024 year of the last Mikus in my collection. Next up, we have a complete pair of Nendoroids, thank god. We have Mio and Kiyoka from My Happy Marriage, and I am so happy that they're releasing at the same time, and I don't have to guess if one or the other will ever get one. Thank you to whoever made the decision to release them together. That said, I don't think they come with a lot of accessories, but if I'm being honest, I haven't really looked into it. I think with these two specifically, I don't really care about the accessories because I'm most likely just gonna have them standing next to each other but not holding hands because that hand piece is apparently a Good Smile pre-order exclusive and I forgot to order from them before the pre-order period ended so I'm just gonna have them like standing next to each other or something really basic. For April, I have just two figures pre-ordered. First up, we have Dusk from Arknights, who I do remember pre-ordering. And I did drop Arknights like pretty early back in the day, so I have no idea who Dusk is other than like how she looks. And I am committed to getting her just because I think she looks really pretty and I love her whole aesthetic. And the price isn't too bad, so I'm really excited for her. Next up, we have... <laughs> We have Indomitable from Azerlane. And uh, yeah, um, honestly, I'm just here because she's super pretty and the price isn't that bad too, like formidable was. And my knowledge on Azerlane can be summed up to pretty much just has banger art and pretty girls and that's about it. And then yeah. <laughs> just one question though, is she like, Related to Formidable? Moving on to May, I have just one Nendoroid so far and it is Mau Mau from Apothecary Diaries which has been an excellent series so far. I've been really enjoying the anime and I absolutely adore Mau Mau and her Nendoroid is actually really cute. I love the face plate she comes with, especially the one with the cat ears and the promo pics. Really excited to get this one. And in June, we're gonna start off with Jinshi to go with the Mau Mau. I legit just ordered this like right after recording the Mau Mau one. I didn't know he went up for pre-order, so really happy about that and that they're coming out relatively close to each other. So excited for both of them. In June, we have a couple of figures starting off with the Nendoroids. We have Dan Hung from Honkai Star Rail. And can you believe that he's already releasing before any of the four or five Genshin Nendos that were announced over a year ago? Wild. But yeah, my boy Dan Hung gets the honor of being the first Star Rail Nendoroid. And he actually looks really nice. I love all the details on his outfit and it makes me excited for future Star Rail Nendos. If they get one. Next up, we have a Nendoroid of Yuno from Mirai Nikki, I think Future Diary in English. Um, I remember watching this like way back in the day and I don't really remember anything about it except that she's insane, which I love. Um, and her Nendoroid actually looks really great. I love the face place that she has and like her axe, iconic. As excited as I am for this though, I feel like I'm ordering this based on hype since I don't really remember the series. So I might cancel this, but I'll see how I feel like closer to release month. And finally, our scale for the month is Tai Takemi from Persona 5. So this is a re-release and I actually did pre-order her back when she first released, but I had huge Persona 5 burnout and ended up canceling it and I've regretted it ever since. So I was really excited to hear that she was getting a re-release because there was no way I was going to pay her aftermarket price, which was really expensive. But yeah, really looking forward to finally getting her. I don't know where she'll fit in my collection, but I'll work out something just for her. 
Next up, we have a scale figure of Lita from 86. Amazing show, amazing character, and I have been begging for a decent Lena figure for the longest time. Like she has a decent amount of figures out already, but they just look so off to me personally. Um, I feel like the only other nice figure she has is the negligee version, which I don't personally collect, but I think it looks the best. That and her Nandroid, of course. I love her Nandroid. Uh, but yeah, when I saw this, I was so excited because it looks great. <laughs> the only thing that would make it better if it was like the bloody Regina version and if she had her hat. But you know what? She looks great. I'm okay with whatever they do as long as it turns out as amazing as it looks in the promo pics. I have never heard of the manufacturer, Wanderer. I don't know anything about them. So yeah, looking forward to this one. Definitely one of my most anticipated for this year. The last figure for June is a scale figure of my little corn, Corin from Fire Emblem Fates. This is the Noir version, which is my favorite. Legit, this figure like got announced out of nowhere. Like I was not expecting it at all, but I am glad that they are making a figure of her. Fire Emblem Fates has a special place in my heart because this is like one of the first entries that I actually played of the series. I did play Awakening before, but I never finished it for whatever reason. So yeah, Fates, great. Love Corrin. If they continue making figures from that, I hope they make an Zero one because that's my girl. That's my number one girl. Or, you know, they can like re-release Camilla, who is stupid expensive. I have been keeping an eye out for her for like years and she just never went down. She just keeps going up and it's ridiculous at this point. But yeah, anyways, back to Corin. She looks great. Super excited for her. She is a bit expensive, but anything for my girl. Moving on, in July we have a Nandroid of my best boy Pom Pom Pudding. He is so round and so adorable. I am actually surprised by how excited I am for him. Like he is just so adorable and makes me really happy. He's like my favorite Sanrio character. And he also comes with a little friend who I did not know existed because I'm a fake fan actually. But they're cute too. Next up, we have both Freeman and Fern coming out at the same time. Their Nendroids look great. I love the face plates, especially Fern's. I just think it looks great. I'm interested in getting like actual figures, like scales or something of the two, but I don't know why, but Fern always looks so weird. She looks like a doll. So I haven't been able to like pull the trigger on any of the other figures because I want them like as a set. So these Nendoroids are perfect for me because they both look great. <laughs> Hopefully a scale figure of Fern comes out that looks decent and goes with the Freeman one. And in the future, if Stark gets a Nendoroid too, I'll pick him up too. But for now, happy with these two. Moving into scale figures. First, we have Groza, aka OTS14 from Girls Frontline because of course I do. At this point, I am pretty much committed to just getting all the Groza scale figures as long as they're pretty, but they're all pretty, so you know. <laughs> this one is by Reverse Studio and they've made two other Groza figures, I think, the music box ones, which were great. This one is called the Divinely Favored Beauty version very appropriately named and she looks so gorgeous and can't wait to add her to my newly formed Groza dedicated shelf. And our last figure for this month, we have S from the A to Z series by Neko in a different design. She is my favorite from the series and I was super excited to see that she was getting another figure since I love the original one that came out a few years ago so much. There's definitely a lot more going on in this design compared to her more sleek and classic one and she just looks so good. So excited for her and just an FYI, she does have another figure coming out which is by Craft Egg for their ID Light line of figures which is I think more premium but 
I will most likely be skipping that one just because something about it just doesn't vibe with me. I think this Maito's one is the one. In August, I don't actually have anything pre-ordered, but I am keeping an eye on one figure, which is the Enterprise Windcatcher version, 1-7 scale by Apex, also from Azrelane. And the only reason why I haven't pre-ordered this one yet is because I want to see what Mimeyoi's quarter scale looks like first. There isn't a prototype or anything yet, just an announcement. And I do prefer 1-7 scales more, but I will hold off in the meantime. The Apex one does look great though, and I love the alternate faceplate she has with the heart eyes. So good. Enterprise, way too pretty. But yeah, gonna wait on this one. In September, we have our first Genshin figure of the year. Low-key, I almost forgot Genshin had figures coming out this year. So we have my baby girl, Kamisato Ayaka, and her figure is based on her splash heart, like pretty much all Genshin figures are. Her base is really unique, which I really like, but it is of a body of water, so if you think about it, she will just have wet socks forever in her figure, if you think about it. <laughs> But yeah, for real though, um, she looks great and I'm super excited to have more Genshin figures and especially Ayaka since she is one of my favorite characters. The details on her look great, especially on her outfit, so super excited. The next figure is an OC by Dia Smile called Street Witch Lily and I am trying not to get too many OC characters anymore. So I am a bit on the fence with this one. I haven't pre-ordered her yet, but I did want to mention her because I've had her bookmarked for a while now. I think ever since she went up and I just love the vibes and aesthetics of it. It looks very cozy. It looks very cute and the quality looks great. So I am leaning towards getting her, but I'll probably decide as we get closer to the release month. In October, we have just one figure and it almost likely get delayed. It is Durandal from Honkai Impact 3rd. And when I say I was so excited to hear that Dudu was getting a figure, I was super excited. And then I saw it was a wedding themed figure and my excitement went down just by like 10%. Not that I hated or anything, but I just think that it would have been cooler if she got a figure of one of her other battle suits or even some of her other outfits. Like, I just think they would have been a lot cooler to see in figure form. That said, I don't know if I want more wedding themed figures in my collection, but I also want a Durandal figure and I don't know if she'll get another one, so I am like torn. But yeah, gonna keep her pre-ordered for now. In November, I don't have any pre-orders yet, but I am keeping an eye on this one Mushroom Girl figure. I have been interested in picking one of these up. There are a couple already out from the series. Um, I think there's like two other figures that came out already. And this is an OC series by Star Shadow Magician, I think. And they also do the Tea Time Cats, which I love. But yeah, again, I'm trying not to buy any OCs, but they're just so tempting. Like this looks amazing and ugh, cute. The black and white color scheme is right up my alley. I like, I'm trying not to get OCs, but if I'm like thinking about it for like months, right? And I still really want it. I feel like that's not really like impulse purchasing anymore. This is just me buying what I want after much consideration, so technically it is justified. But okay, I, I'll just wait and see closer to release month and then make a decision then. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, in December, the last month of the year, we have two figures already and they're both probably gonna get delayed like 99%. First, we have Branya from Honkai Impact 3rd, and this is the Silver Wing Next version, which I am thankful for since this is my favorite version of her. But one thing I don't really like about this figure right now is her base and the effects pieces. I think 
think they're just kind of look bad. I don't really care for them. Branya herself looks great. Like she looks amazing, but everything else looks almost cheap and basic. So I don't know. On the one hand, I really do want Branya, but on the other hand, maybe she'll go down in price after she releases and I can pick her up then. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. But I do wonder how popular Branya is as a character. Like, is she popular enough to get another figure from Honkai Impact 3rd? But if they were to go with her Star Rail design, I would be happy about it too since I like that one too. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, moving on to our last figure for this year. It is Fischl from Genshin Impact. The shock I felt when I saw the news of her actually being released from Alter's basement. She's been in purgatory forever. I was almost convinced they canceled her production silently. But luckily, she's finally up for pre-order and she looks amazing. I don't have that many Alter figures, but they are known for their amazing quality. And it looks like Fischl is getting that Alter treatment because she looks great. But I do have just one question for Alter, which is why does her legs look like that? Why they beef up her thighs like that? Pretty weird, but whatever. The figure also comes with an alternate torso piece, so you can display her to match one of her past birthday illustrations. Personally, I think her original one looks better, so I wish they'd sell a cheaper version without that alternate piece, but other than that, really looking forward to how official it turns out. Alright guys, that is my pre-orders list for 2024. Let me know what figures you have pre-ordered or what you have your eyes on. I love hearing about your collection, so let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.